Hi friends, my name is Nilesh. In this video, we are going to see how we can use AI Assistant for software developers. We all want to do things faster and better. And nowadays, technology is helping us in all possible ways. As developers, we spend a lot of time writing code, searching for information online. And sometimes we lose a lot of time finding information or trying to look for information. So recently I came across one AI powered software which helps us to write code faster and which helps us to uh, get things done in a uh, faster manner. So this tool or this product is called as Tab9. We've used things like IntelliCode or IntelliJ or IntelliSense, sorry, not IntelliJ, IntelliJ is a product, but IntelliSense to make our lives better. But the way IntelliJ code for Visual Studio code or IntelliSense for Visual Studio, for example, it works is it looks at what is available within the libraries and it tries to suggest things for like the parameter names or the types of parameters, what are the function parameters it's taking, what, how many parameters are available, how many overloads are available for a function. But then nowadays it's quite easy to give a thing like what the developer wants to do in a natural language like uh, English language kind of thing and then give it as a comment and uh, the AI tool can help us generate code and it can help us generate a pretty standard set of codes. There was a similar project which was done by GitHub and it's called GitHub Copilot uh, which also uh, uses a similar technology which is AI powered and which generates code based on a series of comments or we can generate code with the help of GitHub Copilot as well. But today we are going to look at Tab9. So let's look at the uh, way in which we can get started with Tab9 and what are the features it offers for us as developers. Uh, to get started, we go to the tab9.com website and here we can see that the logo itself or the tagline itself says that it's an AI assistant for software developers and it helps to code faster. There are two ways in which it can do it. Uh, one is the whole line and the other way is the full function code completion. To get tab9, we go to the get tab9 and it supports various uh, commonly used integrated development environment. So it can be Eclipse, it can be DataGrip, uh, there is a Rider, there is uh, uh, PHPStorm, there is Golang, there is the famous IntelliJ, Visual Studio code is there, Visual Studio is there. Uh, and I've tried to use it with Visual Studio code and the IntelliJ. There is also Sublime. So, most of the modern day IDs or code editors are supported. We get it as an extension or plugin for each of these IDs and we can go into one of these and uh, we can see what are the steps required. So here uh, there is a manual installation steps for Visual Studio Code for example. We can go to the extension. Uh, it gives in a very clear and concise manner how to get Tab9 enabled for your particular integrated development environment. So once we do this, we can go to the ID itself and we can look at the different configurations. So here I am in Visual Studio Code, which is one of my favorite IDs. I use it for developing uh, .NET, Java, Python application. It supports various different languages. So I have enabled Tab9 as an extension or I have added Tab9 as an extension. And in the settings here, uh, we can see that it supports the completion type. Currently, I am not using the paid version or the pro version. I am on the basic version of tab 9. And if I want the advanced completion, I can uh, enable the advanced mode. And that is where it will ask me to go for the tab 9 pro. But for now, I am happy with the basic version. And I'm going to try or I'm going to demonstrate the basic version. In terms of the machine learning models or the AI models that it uses, for serving the recommendations or for code completions. Uh, it is going to be uh, private code. My code is not going to be sent outside of my machine or uh, my environment anywhere else. So uh, in terms of code security or managing that uh, intellectual property of the organization or the individual, it still remains uh, valid and we can use a local machine hybrid or cloud option. 
local machine will be all the recommendations will be given from the uh, files and uh, things on the local machine itself whereas hybrid it is going to combine local and uh, from the uh, cloud and cloud is purely cloud everything will be uh, recommended from the cloud we can also disable some of the files from the auto completion uh, depending on our preference again there might be some files where we don't want the recommendations to come from tab 9 and we can add those file extensions in terms of additional settings there are also uh, beta release related settings and telemetry in terms of integrations it supports uh, the github integration and as we can see here it's asking me to have a uh, or to start a free trial with github integration I'm currently not doing any integration with GitHub or I don't want to try anything outside of my uh, work environment. But if you prefer, you can have one of these uh, integrations enabled. GitLab is available, there is Bitbucket integration. So what it will do is it will look for patterns within these uh, Git repositories or uh, these places where we store our code and it will try to give recommendations and suggestions based on uh, those coding standards and patterns that are followed within those repositories. And then we have the support and the enterprise. So without any further ado, let's go and look at a couple of languages. Uh, but before I go and do that, I also want to show what are the different languages which are supported. So we can go back and somewhere in the documentation we can see uh, which are the languages currently supported and the libraries as well so we can see that it supports front-end languages uh, like angular there is uh, react css uh, the back-end languages like uh, go there is c plus uh, plus general purpose languages like c sharp html java uh, node uh, python so most of the common programming languages or popular programming languages are supported uh, same like the integrated development environment so if your programming language or integrated development environment is not in this list most probably you are not using one of the popular programming language or you are not using one of the popular integrated development environment and if it is missing hopefully uh, you can also request the tab 19 to add support for that language or library so let's go back to visual studio code and look at few examples where we can make use of this. So one place or one feature tab nine has is the single line code recommendation or single line code completion. So here I have a piece of code, which is in the C sharp class, and it's an API where I want to put this uh, small piece of code for sleep for a certain amount of time. So here we can see that there is a thread dot sleep function called and uh, it's using time span as 250 milliseconds so let's say i want to change this uh, to say sleep for instead of 250 milliseconds i want to sleep this particular thread or put this thread to sleep for 50 seconds for example or maybe 50 seconds is too long let's say one second and i enter and you can immediately see that uh, there is a code suggestion given here thread dot sleep time span from seconds one and if I tab out here that line gets completed so here it is able to infer what I have written as a comment and give me as a su suggestion based on the uh, language that I'm using which is C sharp or dot net in this case I've also tried this uh, let me delete this before it gets saved so uh, we can see that it gives uh, certain recommendations based on the context of the file. So let me try here on the PowerShell, which is a scripting language. I want to uh, do some action like delete and let's say delete uh, resource group. I'm working with the Microsoft Azure here and I put a comment here saying resource group and we can see that uh, it's giving me a suggestion with a variable name saying dollar resource group name which is one of the variable in this particular file that i'm using so if i go to the top of this file we can see that uh, there is a variable named resource group name here and that is what it is able to infer uh, based on the context of the file and now 
Uh, let me just scroll up here. If I start typing here, we can see that uh, even without me typing anything, uh, it's giving me a suggestion that az group delete, that's the command. So it's able to, again, uh, recommend me a command, which is uh, Azure CLI command. It's not even a PowerShell command, but looking at the different codes, which are there on the, uh, within this repository, as well as online, it's able to give me a recommendation here. And we can see that it says uh, just by adjusting the comment. Now it's giving me future recommendation that the name of the resource group is that variable resource group name. And there is also a confirmation flag. Yes, it is also able to identify that I'm using a line delimiter here, which is a backtick and it's recommending me that because that is the way I have written this rest of the PowerShell script. So it's again able to uh, recommend me something based on my preference or the style of coding. So let's save this. And the third thing I want to show is a markdown file, which is uh, like a text file or similar to HTML file with its own set of uh, tags or the way we represent information in the markdown file. So in markdown, let's say I want to uh, put a comment here or a header here uh, based on my earlier headers in this particular file which is talking about testing the producer and consumer application it's giving me a recommendation that most probably the header that <coughs> I want to put here is verify messages uh, verify that the messages are processed by consumer app using application insights so application insights again is one of the service in uh, Azure and uh, if I select that, immediately we can see that next it is giving me a paragraph or a series of lines or set of lines uh, which I might be putting as a content of this markdown file. So again, most of this is relevant to what I'm about to write. So what I found is it's again able to link the information based on the context of my project, based on the technology that I'm using. In this case, I am using PowerShell, uh, Azure CLI, uh, Markdown file, C Sharp. It's able to use all that information and it's giving me recommendation that most probably this is what I'm going to put as documentation. And this documentation is again, very, very relevant to the context. In this particular project, I have written about uh, if you look at the docs here there are about eight or nine different docs and or the documentation uh, files or markdown files that i have created and all of them have been created using tab 9 it saved me quite a lot of time in terms of manually writing this uh, it is not 100 percent accurate i would say the accuracy level is about 75 to 80 percent here we can again see a recommendation that uh, it thinks that I might put an image here. It's able to uh, give me a recommendation in the markdown syntax. So again, in terms of syntax uh, recognition, it's quite good. And it gives you the most appropriate uh, suggestion. So I was able to save a lot of time in terms of writing this documentation. If I was to do it manually, typing all of this, it would have taken me quite a bit of time. Uh, but creating these markdown files was uh, quite a breeze, I would say, with the help of tab 9. Uh, there were some cases where it came to things like configuring and uh, it was able to, again, infer uh, very specific information, like in terms of RabbitMQ, for example. I have these uh, properties which I need to set in a YAML file or in a configuration file. And it was able to give me these properties which are very specific to or attributes which are very specific to RabbitMQ configuration. And it's also able to give what are the uh, appropriate values for each one of them. So let's say auto delete, yes, no, or in terms of durability, it is durable. Uh, in terms of type, it is classic. Because it works with so many other repositories and the model is built in such a way that the code is evolving it goes and looks at how the code has been written by other people. It has access to, let's say, all the repositories in GitHub or other public repositories. 
that is why it's able to give me these recommendations which are quite relevant which are quite close to what i'm about to write so personally i found this very useful it saved me a lot of time i see a lot of value in this especially when you are learning let's say new language or when you are doing similar set of tasks and you have to uh, do similar set of commands or you have to perform similar set of commands uh, this can be quite handy it can save you a lot of time instead of writing all those commands manually you will get those suggestions same thing with the code uh, be it c sharp or java or node uh, css all these kind of things it can recommend you uh, quite good quality code i would say so when we do this i think that since it is also following some of the best practices for someone who is new to a programming language if you are learning a new language it can help you to learn new things very quickly instead of doing context switching where you are writing code in let's say visual studio code or intellij or pycharm or whichever ide you are using and you switch to your browser to find out how something is done here within your integrated development environment you are getting suggestions which are very much applicable which are very much almost close to what you will be writing uh, looking at the documentation so personally i felt that this saved me quite amount of time and i hope that if you start using it you will also see value in it and you will find it useful so hopefully you found this information useful if you find this good please uh, hit the like button subscribe to the channel for uh, new videos like this and uh, keep the word uh, spread the word that this is a good channel so you can share this uh, with your friends and family thank you thanks for watching this video if you find something which is better than this or which is as good as this please put it in the comments i would like to know about it thank you thanks once again for watching the video until next time code with passion and strive for excellence